Okay, it should be good. All right, uh, I wanna welcome everybody to our June 24th, 2022 uh, Grand River Conservation Authority meeting. I will officially call the meeting to order and look for a certification of quorum. Uh, yes, we have more than 50% of the members present. All right, thank you very much. So I have a, a few remarks here. Um, first one is staff are working on regulatory updates to the GRCA's website as required under Ontario Regulation 400 2022 or 22 information requirements. You may recall that this regulation was part of the most recent phase two regulations the province released early last month. Staff have sent out emails to board members about the requirement to post contact information on the website for each board member. If you haven't already done so, please follow up with staff to confirm the information that will be posted. This regulatory requirement is to be in place by July 1st, 2022. So you just need to confirm your, your details there. And if you have difficulty, AON will be able to help you through that. On June 20th, Sam and I attended the Conservation Ontario Council. It was announced at the council meeting that General Manager Kim Gavin is retiring and the recruitment for her replacement is ongoing. Sam and Joe have completed their tenure on the Provincial Working Group for the Conservation Authority Regulation. We'd like to send out our thanks to MPP David Piccini, who at the time was the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks for providing our staff with the opportunity to work on this committee. And on June 22nd, I hosted a town hall for the donors of the Guelph Lake Nature Center. Staff did an excellent job of presenting the final building design of the new Guelph Lake Nature Center and this project will helpfully go to tender later this summer. So it's nice to see that coming along with all the uh, different things that have got in the way. And finally, on June 6th, Janet Ivey returned to the GRCA as the manager of water resources in the water management division. Janet has over 20 years experience as a water management professional, most recently with the CVC as chief specialist, watershed plans and source water protection. Previous to her role at the CVC, Janet worked for the GRCA as the sub watershed coordinator. I think I saw her come up here. Welcome, Janet. Welcome to the team. There you are. Hello. Welcome to the team. Okay. And with that, I will move into the agenda. I'd ask if there's any, um, I have a motion that the agenda for the general membership meeting be approved as circulated as amendment, as amended, sorry, moved by Joan, seconded by Richard. Any opposed? That's carried. Any declaration of pecuniary interest? Seeing and hearing none. We have a small correction here uh, to, to some previous minutes. It's a uh, correction to the minutes of the April 22nd, 2022 minutes of the general membership meeting. Correction is that Joan Gatward's attendance in the April minutes was incorrectly recorded. So the motion is that resolution 2285 approving the minutes of the April 22nd, 2022 meeting be amended to read to now read that the minutes of the general membership meeting of April 22nd, 2022 be approved as amended. Everybody get that? Yeah. All right. Can I get a mover for that? Moved by Sue, seconded by Michael. Any opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Down to the minutes of the May 27 meeting. Motion that the minutes of the general membership meeting of May 27, 2022 be approved as circulated. Can I get a mover for that, please? Moved by Joe, seconded by Ian. All in favor? Or sorry, any opposed? My apologies. Any opposed? <laughs> That's carried. That's what's happening when you're starting to go back into live meetings, right? So no business arriving, no delegations, no presentations, correspondence. Moving, oh, sorry, moving to correspondence. Motion that the correspondence from the Canadian Coalition for Invasive Plant Regulation regarding a request for support be received as information. Moved by John, seconded by Kathy. Any opposed? That is received. Thank you. Moving on to 12.1. I've got a uh, minutes of the Ad Hoc Conservation Authorities Act. Motion, motion that the minutes of the Ad Hoc Conservation Authorities Act Committee be he uh, meeting held on June 3rd, 2022 be received as information. Moved by John, seconded mm -hmm. by Bruce Banbury. Yeah, and just quickly, there's a couple of reports coming up out of that. Staff are working diligently to get us compliant with the legislation and we're starting to get, you know, tighter on the inventory and, and the uh, progress reports. And we'll see the next two reports are related to that. So I'll call the question. Any opposed? Joan, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Any opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Uh, uh, any? 
Okay, there's that. So moving on to 12.2, I have a motion that the update to the Grand River Conservation Authority's inventory of programs and services be approved, circulated to all participating Grand River watershed municipalities, posted on the GRCA website and submitted to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks in accordance with Ontario Regulation 68721. Can I get a mover for that? Jerry, seconded by Brian. Any comments or questions on that? All right, any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Next, 12.3, motion that progress report number one be approved, circulated to all participating Grand River watershed municipalities, posted on the GRC website and submitted to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks in accordance with Ontario Regulation 687.21. Moved by Warren, seconded by Ian. Comments or questions? Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Moving on to cash and investment status, that report number GM 06-2253, cash and investment status, May 2022 be received as information. Moved by Joe, seconded by Brian. Any questions, comments? Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. 12.5, motion that the financial summary for the period ending May 31st, 2022 be approved. Moved by John, seconded by Jim. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Foundation member appointments, motion that George Lorenzo, uh, Laurentio and Paul Salvini be reappointed to the Grand River Conservation Foundation for a term of three years and that Joel Doherty be reappointed to the Grand River Conservation Foundation for a term of one year. Any mover for that? Uh, Richard, seconded by Brian. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. So I have a motion here at 12-7. There, there are going to be some corrections, so I'll put the motion on the floor, and then we'll uh, look at some uh, minor corrections to the, to the uh, report. Motion that the Grand River Conservation Authority enter into a maintenance agreement with the township of Woolwich to permit municipal use of Grand River Conservation Authority lands for recreational activities. Um, I'm gonna put it on the floor and then we're gonna fix it. So can I get a mover please? Moved by Ian, second by Joe. Um, uh, Karen or Sam and Joe, do you wanna, can we fix this? Uh, so I, uh, I think um, it says to the township of Will, uh, Woolwich in the recommendation that it should be the township of Wilmot. Okay. And uh, also the date, August 26, 2022. I think that, that uh, that's got to be incorrect. That's not happening yet. Right. So, <laughs> Karen or Sam, what's the date? Yeah, so it would be today's date. So, the date of the report on page 44 of the agenda okay. package is just the incorrect meeting date on the report number. It should be June 24, 2022. And the motion then would swap out, if everyone is in agreement, a friendly amendment to swap out Woolwich to Lamont, as that is the intent of what we're doing here. <laughs> okay, no, perfect. No, it's just, it's just a small item. So, I'm going to, that motion as amended, we're just changing change it to, to Wilmot and changing the date to June 24th. So um, that's on the floor, I believe. So are there any further questions or comments? Uh, Jane? Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask, because this is talking about uh, municipalities uh, looking after GRCA lands and, and things that we're doing with it. Would we be able to have a report come back yet again about Laurel Creek Conservation Area that's right in the middle of Waterloo, where people would like to be able to use that as a, a public park, like the citizens of Waterloo? And whether, I think we were talking to Waterloo, nothing ever happened, but I'd really like that to sort of come up again and, and talk about it again. Mm -hmm. That's not really to do with motion, but. All right. Um, so on that sidebar at staff, can we, yeah, uh, okay. three units your chair for sure. Okay, does that work, Jane? Yep, yep. Okay. Other than that, I'm all for it. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. So I, I'll just to, to be clear. A any opposed? As amended, that is carried. Thank you. Twelve eight. 
Motion that the Grand River Conservation Authority enter into maintenance agreement with the Township of Woolwich to permit municipal use of Grand River Conservation Authority lands for recreational activities. Uh, moved by Sue, seconded by Joe. Any questions, comments? Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. <clears throat> Moving along to 12.9, Conestoga Dam. Motion that the Grand River Conservation Authority award the tender for the Conestoga Dam Bridge Deck Rehabilitation Project to Hugo MB Contracting Incorporated for the amount of $815,201, including HST, that the AECOM Canada Limited be retained to oversee the contract administration and quality assurance for the Conestoga Dam Bridge Deck Rehabilitation Project for the amount of $93,485, including HST. Got a mover, please. Moved by Joan. Seconded by Bruce Whale. Comments or questions? Uh, Sue? What did we budget for this? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I would ask Gus if he could come on and respond to any questions. All right. Gus, welcome. Floor's yours. Very much. Um, so the amount that we actually put in for our grant application was $600,000. Uh, this was um, kind of uh, very not including uh, HST. So I think we were about $125,000 over our estimated budget for the project. And um, basically, um, I think uh, some of the rationale for that is just uh, everyone's picking up on work that uh, might have slowed down through COVID as well. So it was just a little bit uh, more than expected. And uh, we do intend to uh, kind of, um, we, have, we have to drop one of the projects, the gate maintenance at Conestoga, just because the, the schedule's con conflict to that. So there'd be some savings there. This year, anyway, for the. So, so we assume it'll balance out. When we applied for the six hundred thousand dollar grant, did we get six hundred thousand? Um, yeah, we've talked to uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources on that. Uh, just the program coordinator, so we will be able to kind of move grant money money around to actually cover the extra on this one. Okay, thank you. All right, Sue, that do it. Okay, thanks, Gus. Is there anything further? Oh, uh, Bruce Whale. And then I'll get you warm. Go ahead, Bruce. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was looking for my hand, but it took too long to find it. But um, <laughs> you went by budget so quickly, but this question is related to Conestoga Dam. And I just wondered, when I was looking at revenue generated uh, at Shand and Fergus, they're about on target where, uh, this is from electricity sales, where Conestoga is only running at about a third of what we're budgeting for. Is this because of water flow or is it because of the maintenance work that's being done in the dam or what are the factors that uh, decrease that revenue? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I'd ask us to respond to right. that question. Okay, Gus. Um, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair, you. Or, or I can respond, Mr. Chair, uh, through you. Uh, we had some maintenance operations at uh, Conestoga Dam earlier this year to refurbish the turbine. So we had some downtime uh, in the early part of the year. We brought it uh, back online in early February. So that's why the, uh, the hydro revenue is a little bit uh, less at Conestoga right now. And um, also earlier, there, there was some lower flows that also contributed to it. But uh, currently, we're producing uh, the, the normal amount of hydro that we would be at this time of year. So it really is related to maintenance and refurbishment that uh, was completed in uh, in the winter months this year. Does that do it, Bruce? All right. Is there anything further? A warrant? Yes, of course. Sorry, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with regard to the road closure and the detours in place, can you identify what uh, the detour might be? If someone uh, coming from Kishore Waterloo going to Drayton Festival, theater if we normally would use county road 11 and drive over the the dam what would be a good suggestion or what will be the alternative routes yeah through you mr chair um the detour will be signed on route there as well but uh, generally if you're coming from kw uh you take the the Macton bridge and uh, just turn a little bit earlier instead of going over the dam okay yeah the, the detours will all be marked i i you kind of broke up there in the beginning Okay, yep. does that do it Thank for? You. All right. Yep. Is, is there anything further? I will call the question. Any opposed? 
That is carried. Thank you very much. And we're on to the uh, current watershed conditions. I'll let Dwight speak and then I'll, I'll do the motion. Dwight, do you have any exciting updates for us today? Can't seem to get my video on. There it goes. <laughs> okay. Um, not really, Mr. Chair. Certainly we are heading into uh, a drier condition now. We've had warmer conditions and uh, uh, precipitation has been, been lower than normal. Uh, over the last few weeks. The reservoirs are in a good operating range right now and are basically in a good position to add water to the river. And we expect to just try to follow the upper real curve of the reservoirs, but they're basically uh, doing what they're designed to do right now. And that's add water to the river and uh, fulfill that important function. Um, right now, the longer term range, longer range forecast is in your report. Uh, but uh, we are affected by something called La Nina, and there could be a, a higher potential for some of the hurricanes to come inland over the continent of the United States and affect us, and we'll be monitoring that over the, the late summer and fall periods uh, when the hurricane season starts to peak. Thank you, sir. Uh, comments, questions, Sue? Dwight, as I always use you, uh, can you tell me, uh, do I have to water my uh, uh, gardens? Is it, we can get rain soon? I'm surprised at the amount of time we haven't had rain. Yeah, it, um, right, right now, unfortunately, uh, for, for the short term, I would advise that you should like to be planning to water your gardens because uh, there's not a lot of rain in the forecast right now. Um, but it's variable this time of year. Uh, storms can crop up uh, off the Great Lakes. So... Um, it is a, you know, a tricky time of year as far as weather goes in southwestern Ontario, but for the yeah. short term here, we're looking at, at warm, dry conditions. Yeah, the storms are coming through, but they're coming through without rain. It's quite bizarre. Very interesting. Thank you, Dwight. Thank you, Sue. Um, any further comments, questions from the board? Okay, uh, the motion is that report number GM 062257, current watershed conditions as of June 15th, 2022, be received as information. A move by Richard, seconded by John. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Okay, uh, moving along, uh, we have a, a closed session item, but before we do that, I'm gonna ask Warren to do his other business at this point, if he'd be all right with that. Are you good, sir? I am good, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, good, good morning, fellow um, GAC, GRCA board members. This morning, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize a special community in the northern part of the watershed. Located in the municipality of Wellington North, the former village of Arthur was named after Arthur Wellesley, who became the Duke of Wellington and is best known for his victory against Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. Settlers began arriving in the area in the 1840s. The village of Arthur was first surveyed in 1841 by John MacDonald and then officially 1846 by D.P. Papineau. During the first survey in 1841, the population of Arthur was 22 people. Saw and grist mills on the Conestoga River encouraged people to settle here. Over the next 15 years, the numbers rose to 400 and by 1900, the population had just risen to over 1500. 1851, a post office was opened for school and a church were organized as well. The development increased in 1872 when the train line of the Toronto, Gray and Bruce Railway reached the village and a train station was opened. The Arthur Enterprise News, established in 1863, was one of the few non-syndicated weekly papers in Canada. By 19, 1890, a high school had, had opened. 1897, Arthur was the first village in Ontario to be connected to electricity line. Power was only available in the evenings. How times have changed. In November, 1942, the Toronto Star ran a front page headline that read, Arthur Village gives sons and money to aid the war and recognized Arthur as the most patriotic village in Canada. At that time, 126 residents enlisted from, had enlisted from the population of 890. Uh, one of, out of every seven Arthur residents fought in the Second World War. It was the highest ratio in comparison to villages of comparable size in Canada. 
By the end of the war, 338 Arthur residents had enlisted and 25 were killed in action. Now, the, the fact that uh, Arthur became incorporated as a village in 1872, on this candidate coming up on July the 1st, 2022, the village of Arthur will be celebrating its 150th birthday. Happy birthday to the residents of Arthur. Now, I'm not sure if Bruce Whale, the representative from, Welling, from North, Wellington North, uh, can update us in any plans that are in place to celebrate um, Arthur's 150th birthday celebration on the Canada Day weekend. Bruce, anything? Uh, yes, for you, Mr. Chair. I'm not, I don't have all the details, but there, there is going to be a ceremony or a reunion over the weekend uh, with lots of activities. I'm sure it's posted on their website. Uh, <clears throat> an interesting yeah. fact uh, one of the war veterans who was also the druggist in Arthur for years and his family continues on in that business, uh, John Walsh, uh, he's been very active in historical society and also with the Legion and, and uh, in, in charge of a lot of the murals that are painted on the buildings there, but he's going to be cutting, cutting the opening ceremony ribbon, I think that's on the Friday night. And uh, he was my hockey coach when I was a little gaffer uh, <laughs> learning how to play hockey. And, and he coached a lot of kids in hockey over the years. So quite a, an outstanding resident. And I think he just turned 97 this year. So uh, he's hanging in there and he's going to be doing the official ribbon cutting. So anybody that is interested in, in uh, Legion and war stories uh, and even the history of Arthur. I did attend high school there for a year, my grade 13. So I have some connection, but not, uh, not my closest uh, little village. So thanks, thanks for that information, Warren, very interesting. Yeah, and there's some excellent murals on some of the buildings in Arthur as well. It's a nice, nice place to visit. Uh, Martha and I are gonna try to get up there on Friday or Saturday this weekend and take a look. But are there any other communities in the watershed that have any special Canada Day celebrations? John, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, well, the last battle on Canadian soil against a foreign power was held in the village of Oakland in Brant County. And every year, the South Brant Lions Club, whose park that they own and maintain, hold a fish fry on Canada Day to celebrate our wonderful country. So that's from three till seven on Canada Day and whether you can make it or whether you celebrate in some other fashion, I'm wishing everyone a happy Canada Day. Is, is there a prize if we can guess who that foreign power was? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and unfortunately, they burned the mill. Oh. They, they like to burn things, didn't they? Catherine? They burned down their White House, though. <laughs> That's right. Catherine, go ahead. All right. I'm not, I'm not doing the guessing, but I wanted to uh, just let you know that uh, the city of Cambridge has one of the largest, if not the largest, Canada Day parade. And we are so happy to be back in person this year. And uh, so we'll be going ahead at about 11 a.m. on Canada Day for a massive parade. You're all welcome. Well, thank you for that. Sounds very exciting. Okay. Well, and there is some good news here because I know Guy Guardhouse has been looking for hydro in the evening, so he'll be moving to Arthur. Okay. So if there's nothing further, thanks for that, Warren. And thank you we're... very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we're going to move into closed here. I have a motion that the general membership enter into a closed meeting in accordance with the Municipal Act, Section 239.2 for the following purposes proposed or pending acquisition or disposition and a legal matter. Uh, moved by John. And the second item is a property disposition city of Guelph motion. Uh, I'm going to read the first part of it. And then it's, and it's a considerable motion with lots on there. It is in your packages and it's available on the, um, the website. If that's acceptable to the board or does the board need me to read that through? So I'll just read the introduction is, in order to further the objects of the Grand River Conservation Authority by assisting a member municipality and providing municipal services, therefore be it resolved that the property currently described as 
73, so on and so forth in the city of Guelph. Is that sufficient staff? Yes. All right. So can I get a mover for that motion? Moved by Bob Bell, seconded by Jerry. Are there any opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. And is that's it? That's it. All right, great. I wasn't sure. Just a, just a quick comment to remind everybody, we are not meeting in July. That is correct, right? The next date is August 26th. That, that okay. is correct. Just, just wanted to confirm that. Everybody have a great summer and a happy Canada Day. Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, have a happy Canada Day. Uh, we'll see you in August. Keep safe. And uh, Bruce, I'll uh, send you the truck back by then, all right, if that's all right? Yeah, that'll be good. Just make sure it's full of gas. It'll be full of leaves, too. All right. Okay. Motion Thanks, everyone. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Kathy, I think. And seconded by Les. Thank you. Any opposed? <laughs> we are adjourning as we shrink. Thank All right. You. Thanks. Sorry about that. Thank well, you very much. Okay.